Allie Moore. I am Bill Mardigans. Okay. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. I fucking nailed it. Good job. It only took me a season and a half. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for joining us, everybody. If this is your first time listening to the show, this is the Silver Linings Playlist. We are a podcast that takes movies that end in downer endings, sad endings, fucked up endings, anything that qualifies like that, and we try to find the good in them, Uh, and we are not good at our job. So you're in for for a roller coaster of a time listening to us, uh, especially with this episode. Uh, This is... I don't know, man. I think out of all the movies we've done, this one might be one of the most cringy, uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable this entire movie. Yeah. It Um, took... I've been trying to watch this movie since, like, it came out, and mm -hmm. I literally, up until yesterday, I I couldn't sit through it. Well, the name of the movie, as you can tell by the title of the episode, is Ingrid Goes West from 2017. So, Mally, Ingrid goes batshit crazy. <laughs> so, Mally, you're telling me you, you took you a couple of tries to get through this one. Yeah, like I wanted to catch it in theaters, but I didn't get a chance. And then it came out. I think it was on. Yeah, I watched it on Hulu and I made it like 20, this was like three months ago. Mm-hmm. Maybe even farther back than that. I made it 20 minutes in and just I just couldn't keep going. Like I was like, man, like. It's really pretty well written and like it looks really good. Like cinematography was pretty good and whatnot, but like I was just so uncomfortable the whole time. Yeah. So um, I turned it off and it's been even before you pitched doing this mm-hmm. uh, movie for the podcast, I tried like another time, couldn't make it through it. And then this whole week, I literally have been watching it in like 15 minute little segments yeah and i finally finished it yesterday yeah this was one i was interested in seeing mostly because the trailer and i love the cast uh and when i finally did i did not feel great uh most of the movie and then especially during the ending i was very uncomfortable and very upset um this rewatch was no different i was even more uncomfortable and cringe um yeah it was it's it's a good movie. It's a well-made movie, but I don't. I don't know. Um, yeah. It, it, mm. Speaking of which, uh, we have a guest here with us who also saw the movie. Was this your first time seeing it all the way through? No. You've seen it before, right? I've seen it like twice. You've seen it twice. Okay. <laughs> Are you gonna introduce her? Or? I am. Thank you for okay. joining us. Uh, this is my fiance, Priscilla Hendry. Thank you for joining us, Priscilla. You gotta you gotta talk right into the microphone when you talk, <laughs> or no one's gonna hear you. I didn't say anything important. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. What uh, okay. was your uh, what what was your first time you saw this movie? What was it like? Um. What do you mean? What was it like? Like, how did you feel during after? What did you think of it? I mean, I thought it was okay. I think you're being a little dramatic. I don't think it was that cringy. It, I mean, there was definitely some parts where I had secondhand embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. But I don't think it was that bad. Well, agree to disagree. Uh, We'll get into why you think that. Uh, But first, let's get into a little backstory for the movie. So the year, like I mentioned, is uh, 2017 from last year. Uh, The director is Matt Spicer. The cast is starring Aubrey Plaza, Elizabeth Olsen, O'Shea Jackson Jr., Wyatt Russell, Billy Magnuson, I think is how you pronounce that. Uh, Mag- Magnuson, yeah. Magnuson, Palm Clementine, Charlie Wright, Pearl Utt, and Angelica Amore. Uh, I couldn't find an exact budget for this movie, but I do know it's under $5 million, uh, and the movie managed to gross $3 million worldwide, currently sitting at an 85% certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Huh. Again, I'm, I'll give it that rating. It's a good movie. It's just so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll we'll figure out why Priscilla doesn't think it's that bad uh, after we get into the Hi, trailer. Priscilla. Hi. <laughs> Let's get into the trailer. The couple that yogas together stays together. Hashtag perfect. True romance vibes. Hashtag yes. perfect. Perfect. Congratulations. Ingrid Sorburn. I thought she was in an insane asylum. Live in the sunshine. Swim in the sea. Oh, 
see. Hashtag California. LA is the best. I'm making a ton of new friends. You should totally follow me on Instagram. Are you an escort or something? Suspicious. Can I treat? I'm calling about a lost dog named Rosca. Confusing her with one of your Insta fans. <laughs> you are by far the coolest, most interesting person I've ever met. <laughs> You're so funny. I love you so much. You're amazing. My best friend Taylor has been helping me explore my creative side. If you got lower, that would be better. You mean on the floor? Yeah. Oh. Thanks. You're the best. I need you to tell everyone you're my boyfriend. What is this? Why are you acting like this? You don't even like these people. I do like them. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's dope. <laughs> Okay, that trailer does not make me uncomfortable like the movie did. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> the trailer's like almost kind of fun. Yeah. And this movie is not that at all. Yeah, it's not a very fun movie. Um, yeah, I I like the style of the trailer. I think it's rhythmically, it's very, it's very entertaining. It's well edited. Uh, but it pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the movie um, without a lot of the cringe parts of it. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, I, I just, I didn't expect it to be as, like, based off the trailer, I was not expecting this to be as dark as it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's a lot darker, I think, anyways, than uh, than the trailer lets it up to be. The trailer Absolutely. makes it seem like it's a lot more fun than it actually is. Which, while, while we're talking about the trailer, I just because I'm looking at the poster right now, have you seen what the tagline for the movie was? Yeah, it's, she'll follow you. <laughs> yeah, That's it's kind of so... creepy creepy yeah i like the poster though it's so stylized and kind of like overly like i don't know animated and kind of like photoshoppy but like it works perfectly for mm-hmm. the movie well let's get into the movie so priscilla i wanted you to be on this episode because you are kind of a social media connoisseur i think right like you are very interested in like instagram and twitter and that kind of like the, the whole kind of social media game, right? Yeah, for the most part. So you said you didn't think the movie was as uncomfortable or cringy as we did. Um, do you have anything you want to say on the whole about the movie, like in its defense? Um, How much did you relate to Ingrid? <laughs> I did not. I did not relate to uh-huh. Ingrid. But I feel uh-huh. like I, it just wasn't so cringy because like that's just, I don't know. I think I'm just numb to it because I feel people are actually like that like all the time. That's what makes oh, it uncomfortable. People are definitely like this. <laughs> That's like, what makes me very I, uncomfortable. I have a few friends that are like, I could see them, if they just cr- cross that line, I could really see them going full Ingrid. Yeah. Or And on, I have a lot of friends that are very like, a lot like Taylor too, and it's annoying as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I realize like Ingrid's character is essentially like the extreme version of that, of like someone that's obsessed with like the likes and the... Like the euphoria of getting a bunch of comments and upvotes and stuff like that, but I do feel like it's very easy to get to that point. Like I feel like you, I don't know, someone goes going viral once with a post or a tweet, and it's like it's kind of like gambling. Like you kind of get addicted to seeing the numbers go up, or at least that's how I feel about it. Do you disagree, Priscilla? Because you're kind of giving me a mm, look. Well, I feel like that doesn't really focus in this movie. I think it's more she wants these grim links for the attention of the person she's obsessing about. Okay. I don't believe it's her personal gain. Like, like realistically, most of us that use social media like as a serious platform. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, well, I I would agree with that, except for the ending of the movie where she is getting the likes and the upvotes, and it's because of her. Like, it's something she did. You know what I mean? Like, she's getting all the upvotes and stuff, and she's... You can see that kind of glint in her eye where she's going right back to that obsessive, compulsive, kind of mentally unstable state. Oh, you can speak freely. Okay, I didn't want to yeah. interrupt you. I thought you were still going. No, no, go, go ahead. I, I was just All saying, me and Dustin do is interrupt each other. I, I was just thinking it, it makes a lot of sense that she has become what she's always obsessed about the person. I don't think it's necessarily that, but I think she finally is like um, the Olsen character. Elizabeth Olsen, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like she's now like, I can compete with that. Okay, Wait, hang on. Th- th- this this might be jumping a little too far ahead, but I I gotta ask Priscilla, do you think this movie has a happy ending? I was just gonna <laughs> ask like that. So do you think the ending is a good ending? No, I mean morally, no. Yeah. I mean, I I enjoyed. Don't the ending. bring morals onto this show. <laughs> I enjoyed the ending, and I thought, I mean, I guess it depends what character you're talking about in the movie. Well, that's a good question because I was gonna ask. Uh, you, Mally, what you think uh, the moral of the story is? Because I feel like it should be social media is not important, but the, by the end of the movie, no one's learned a lesson, I don't think. No one. Um, so I don't know what the movie is trying to tell me. Is Are they trying to say that social media is kind of like a hopeless platform? Like, I mean, I, I, you know, it's a double-edged sword, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, it can, you know, you can use it and not, you know stalk people yeah like a psychopath yeah or you can yeah um i mean i'm not i'm not breaking any ground here by saying this but the, the i think the problem with oversharing on like instagram and facebook and twitter and stuff like that is that exactly what happens with ingrid you kind of develop this one-sided relationship that the other party is not even aware of like right. oh Aubrey Plaza thinks they're best friends before she even meets her, I think. Well, I mean, let's talk about the beginning of the movie. The mm-hmm. beginning of the movie starts with Ingrid scrolling through Instagram, looking at this woman, this girl named Charlotte, who mm-hmm. like got married and gets mad that she didn't get invited, mm-hmm. goes to the wedding and pepper sprays her in the face. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, like I said, it's the extreme version of that obsessive. Have compulsive. you ever been pepper sprayed? I have not, but I know it's not fun. That shit hurts. You you speak like you've had plenty of experience. Yeah, no, I pepper sprayed myself once. Oh, that's all right. Fun. <laughs> my okay, so one of my old like roommates had a pepper spray thing on their keys, mm-hmm. and I borrowed their keys once, and I was fumbling with the keys. And I accidentally like set it off in my face. <laughs> That's if it's accidentally set off like that. I feel like it's not a very well made pepper spray. <laughs> no, it hurt. So, Priscilla, but like I live though. Priscilla, so what I'm do good. you think the moral of the story is? Or if the, there doesn't have to necessarily be one, I just feel like I don't. I don't feel like there's a moral of the story. To be honest, you think hashtag it's just no a, morals. A tale of like. I think it's just a tale of just this crazy girl. And I think they just use Instagram as a thing because people do get really obsessed with it and you get obsessed with people. I know I'm not obsessed with anybody, but I personally follow people that I know have no idea who I am. So I, I personally, you had an interesting theory that the movie is not really about social media, that it's about mental health. Yeah. And how people can go ignored when they're truly trying to reach out. Oh, yeah, because they're constantly like, oh, we're going to call the cops on you. We're going to call... And then they never call the cops. I feel like it would have been in her best interest if they would have just called the cops. <laughs> well, it's interesting, too, because she's put into, like, kind of a mental health clinic at the beginning of the movie after the whole thing with Charlotte. But she's immediately given her phone back, and I feel like that was a huge misstep yeah. from the judge. Like, I feel like the judge should have been like, well, you clearly don't need access to a smartphone. Uh- I mean, they did that I with the. Uh, someone give her a razor. <laughs> they did that with Hunter Moore with the uh, "Is anyone up?" thing. He's not allowed internet access anymore. Aww. Like this girl assaulted someone because of. Yeah, but I feel like her assault is like nothing compared to what Hunter Moore did. No, you're you're right, but it just feels like if I can tell that is where the root of the issue stemmed from. That, yeah, and, uh, I feel like her having a phone is the absolute worst case 
the the well, worst they, things you can do. They don't know. They don't know that that's why she mm. pepper sprayed her. They, you know, who knows? She never know. She might have never told them that. Yeah, I stalked this girl on Instagram, and you also don't know if there's any backstory to this girl. Um. So, do we think? I'm guessing the idea here is that Ingrid's mother's death is what kind of caused her to spiral, or do you think she was always like that? I mean, maybe. I also brought the thing. Maybe she killed her mother. I, 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 Whoa. I don't think there's any evidence to support that. Whoa. <laughs> well, if she's crazy enough to do all this other crazy stuff, you don't know what she could have done. I mean, she's... Yeah, none of that's anything compared to murder. murder. Yeah, like assault, maybe, but I don't know, maybe. I'm more interested in the mother's backstory. I guess. <laughs> Um, I don't want a prequel to this movie. Can we talk about Dan? Oh, poor Dan. Dude, I felt so bad for... It's Dan. Dan, you're right. It's Dan. I felt so bad for him the entire time. He just consistently gets screwed over. But, as with everyone else, he doesn't learn his fucking lesson at the end. No, he does not. Uh, I'm glad you pointed that out, too. Because Dan, I feel like, while he's not an instigator... He certainly uh, can't take a hint and like see the signs through the through the trees. Like he cl- Ingrid, like Priscilla mentioned, Ingrid clearly needs help. And I feel like of all people, Dan should be like the one that notices it. You know what I mean? No. Right. No. Like absolutely. No. Like. No. It's, wait. What? Well, I mean, no. I think he likes her, and I think he's blinded by that. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Is that most people in this movie are kind of blind to Ingrid's? They're not. There's not a whole lot of empathy. Mm-mm. to Ingrid's yeah. situation. Um, well, like, he kind of starts out, like, you know, he's like, you know, you're fucking crazy. What's wrong with you? And then all of a sudden, he's like, I, like, less fuck, though. Yeah. And like, I felt like he flipped on that real quick. Yeah. Can we talk about uh, just the score and the sound design of this movie? Because I, f- I feel like it's supposed to be super upbeat, but I am, it's very unsettling and uneasy. And, I I I think the iPhone clicking sound has to be one of the worst things ever, right? Like the, that sound now stresses me out. Like the keyboard, it's very anxious to me. I don't. Maybe it's just me, but when I hear the iPhone clicking sound, because you, I, Priscilla, you keep the sound on yeah. on your phone, and it gives me so much anxiety. Oh, uh, I didn't know Priscilla was a sociopath. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought everyone already knew. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had my assumptions. But, like, when Ingrid first moves to, to L.A. and she's, like, riding her bike down the street and, like, the score is, like, doing this weird kind of uplifting kind of... Right. It's very... I don't know. It's super okay. <laughs> uneasy. Yes. Side note. I feel like it totally sounds like the soundtrack from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yeah, Interesting. yeah, it does kind of sound like, like that, Pee-wee's. like little, huh. that upbeat. Do you know something that really bothered me going back to the iPhone clicking? It made that sound even when she was like double clicking a photo on Instagram to like it. I mean, I think you can. Does it do that? Does it do I think, that? I think so. I, I, honestly, I haven't had. The, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I haven't had the keyboard clicking sound on since like 2008. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my my phone is consistently on silent. Brazil's the opposite. It's, it's always which is why I am really bad at responding to people. <laughs> it's, yeah, at three in the morning, I just hear a little her phone going off. <laughs> just <laughs> God, yeah. I like. The <laughs> I mean, you can light the clicking. It's fine, but it makes does, me feel does like it not I'm make, getting something done. But does it not make you kind of anxious? <laughs> no, well, no, I don't, or like hearing it from other people stresses me out. Yeah. I, it stresses me out if I hear it fast. You know, when people are like angry texting. So do you like? Yeah. So you exclusively text slow, like? No, <laughs> I don't text at all. <laughs> yeah, so you have a lot of notes written down too, Priscilla. Is there anything you wanted to talk about in particular before we continue um, rambling? I was gonna point out that. From all the engagement she does on social media, how does she not have a million followers yeah, by now? <laughs> she likes that's every good point. every post and like is the one time she comments is on Taylor's post. Yeah, right? but all those likes alone, because the way at least Instagram works is the more you like, comment, you know, post, it, it's your engagement score basically. The more your engagement score is, is the more people are able to see you. Like, you'll pop up in, like, the Discover Me yeah. section. So the amount of people, like, she is liking or possibly commenting on mm-hmm. or following, it would – she would pop up constantly in the Discover. She would have probably, like, a million followers by now. Does she ever post anything before Taylor – she meets Taylor? Um, well, I think she creates a new account for that, doesn't she? She does. She does create a new account for that. I don't think she does on her old one. I never 
don't ever remember her taking photos or anything. Um, I wanted to point out that I thought it was interesting that she discovers Taylor in a magazine and not on Instagram. Yeah, that was interesting. Like, you would think they would, like, fully push that envelope of her being so ingrained in social media, and especially Instagram, that she would have discovered her, uh, the person she would later obsess over, like, in, through Instagram as well. I don't know. Just- well, I think that goes to show, like, the, like, how social media is, like, bleeding into everything else. Like, they're literally writing, like, magazine articles yeah. about people on, that are, like, Instagram famous. I don't think her article is about her... For like, social media, yeah. I think that she was like um, a curator or something. No, what's it called? Interior designer. Interior designer. Is that what she does? Yeah, I okay. believe so. Um, I kind of want to play script doctor here for a second because I think if they're going to go that route and have her discover Taylor in the magazine, it should be because she doesn't have access to a phone. Well, maybe she was trying to stay away from the phone, so she was reading magazines, and that's what kind of like like an addict. She like hmm. was drugged back into uh, the phone. Maybe I don't. I don't feel like they. Yeah, I, f- I feel like she's never really. That much, yeah, though. I feel like she's never really trying to break her habit. I feel like she's only trying to further it. Like, well, what I was gonna say with being a script doctor is I feel like what made what have made it work for me is if when she went through therapy they took her phone and then she discovers Taylor through a magazine, sees her Instagram handle, goes out and buys a phone, and then that's like the step of her. Going right back into her addiction, her taking the, the steps, the measures to buy a phone and therefore go right back into it. And it could also, you know, have a social commentary on rehab centers and stuff like I that. Mean, rehab centers have access to the Internet. Yeah, but it's very heavily monitored, isn't it? I mean, if people in prison can get on Facebook, I'm sure that people <laughs> in mental institutes can do the same. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Touche. I don't know what's more cringe to me, saying the word hashtag out out loud or using cliche ones in your posts, like in the opening credits with the hashtag perfect and stuff like that. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag well, blessed. Oh my God, God blessed. It. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's those are literally the most popular Oh no, ones. I get They'll it. they get you the most uh, views. And no, no, I, sh- I get it. That's just. I'm hashtagging every silver linings post, hashtag blessed from now on. <laughs> using the hashtag milk drinker, you fucking monster. Yeah. Is that we can find people more like like I will. <laughs> Mally, I need you to follow me on on all social media, especially Reddit. I could do that. Okay, well, th- here's the address you can go to. It's reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. I need you to go to the official discussion thread for Ingrid Goes West, and I need you to leave this contest code I'm about to give as a comment so you can win a free Blu-ray, okay? Oh, sorry, I'm posting on instagram yeah yeah so the contest code you can give to win uh a free blu-ray not you mally but uh, our listeners every time is all my life i've prayed for someone like you so yeah leave that as a contest code for ingrid goes west we'll randomly select a winner and we'll get in touch with you to send you out some free stuff thanks for listening yeah true story i think the casey and jojo song is probably the best song for this movie (laughs) Oh my god, I was so happy when that song came <laughs> on, but then I got immediately sad too. Well, it's great the way they play it in the trailer too, like the lyrics, like the way Aubrey Plaza is singing it and it like uh, like emphasizing <laughs> that she's prayed for someone like her her whole life. It's great. It's perfect. Well, and do you know uh, originally it was supposed to be a different song? I did not know that. Guess what song it was supposed to be. You each get one guess. Is it is it another R&B song? Can you give us that? Oh yeah. Is it another oh. Casey and JoJo song? No. I was going to say Crazy by Casey and Jojo. <laughs> hmm. Is it a popular song? Oh, yeah. It's a big one. I got no guesses. You got nothing, yeah, Priscilla? I don't think I really I said, know. It's too broad, of a, too broad of a... a Seal. Kiss from a rose. <laughs> that would have been better to me. I don't know. I think the Casey and Jojo song like, thematically fits. Cause it she even does, says, you're like but my I sister, also just like love brother. Kiss from a Rose. Yeah, but Seal is like... The Toto of hip hop. Oh, uh, uh, first what? of all, that, <laughs> Seal's not um, a hip hop artist. Well, what did you call it? R and B. R and B. So, so many issues thing. with that statement. That's not. Priscilla's got all the record to say hip hop and rhythm and blues are the were same you, thing. Wait, were you saying the Toto of hip hop as an insult? No, no I mean she like fucking the, loves Toto. I love Toto. Okay, but like you know, Africa hmm, is like I will a fly cheesy. my ass back to L A. <laughs> just um. Hmm. I get a crowbar. This might be a stretch. Go full Ingrid.
<laughs> this might be a stretch, but I feel like this movie is essentially like this generation's version of the bar the Barbie doll. Like the uh what? The lifestyle that they're trying to portray here, this unrealistic standard of like living of how you should live your life. Like it's it's all empty and fleeting feelings. It's, you know, oh look, here's here's a bunch of Instagram photos. I'm I'm living the best life possible. I'm only showing you the good, no bad. You know, here's I'm gonna buy this house out in the desert at Joshua Tree and Stargaze and everything. And there's no problems whatsoever. No one's dealing with any kind of like uh, there's no financial issues. There's no relationship true, issues. True. Like it's just it's all positives, and I think that's very damaging when it comes to social media. Like still trying to figure out how they all afford to live in LA. Because holy shit, I know. I said this like a million times. Because like okay, like I'm just gonna focus on Ingrid. She moves to LA with sixty grand, sixty six thousand dollars. Yeah, not, and she gets a place in Venice for three thousand dollars. A month buys all this new stuff like that, that like they show her like kind of struggling money wise later on but but towards she, the end of the she movie draws 50 grand on that house <laughs> yeah like she only spent 16 grand and if you immediately take out three grand no for that, way three grand for that first month's rent not to mention a security deposit <laughs> yeah first last security which that's so that's about, that's probably like nine right there yeah, that's so. That's nine grand. Well, I guess so there's not really. Me she only spent like I can't math. Like well, six spent, grand. What she spent? She spent like twelve hundred on had... the painting too, and then another twelve hundred on the ugly lamp. And that, yeah, was it a lamp or a dress? I it thought was it was a lamp. Okay, yeah, or a chandelier type. Yeah. Dealio. Not only that, but how does Taylor and uh, Ezra survive off of? Only one of them bringing in income, it seems like. That's what I said, but I have a theory. I mean, Taylor's making bank just on that promotion stuff. You think so? You think she's endorsed? Oh, dude. Yeah, no, she says it. Like, that's she. That's how she makes a living. Like, companies pay her to promote their stuff See, on her social that, media. That's so crazy to me that you can make a living just, like, touting other people's products on your Instagram. I mean, it's the same thing as YouTube. I know. that I still don't understand how that model works, and I think it's starting to come down because... YouTube is in for strict rules now on how you can make money through them. Like you, oh yeah, for sure. They up the subscriber amount you have to have, the amount of views you have, the amount of uploads uh-huh. you have per month or something. It's very difficult to make money, and like a, a livable, even even just minimum wage doing that is very difficult. Um, what, what were you saying though about uh? I was just saying, based on her brother, who mm. seems to not have a job and travel quite often, they probably just have. Uh, they're just trust fund kids probably or something yeah his sort. coke addiction has yeah, got to be expensive <laughs> oh i know god right um well and they say uh what's her boyfriend's name ezra yeah or her husband mm-hmm. um like he had a job i don't did they ever say what he did previously if they did i didn't they catch did it. i don't remember what yeah. it is but they did mention um it. yeah so i mean i'm assuming he has some money from that but i mean even still and, like, they said she's the only person that's ever bought one of his paintings, so he hasn't brought in money in God knows how long. Yeah. Well, I, I to further fuel that whole, like, identity about this, for the, like, the Barbie doll syndrome, like, are we are we supposed to assume that, like, uh, Taylor is a fake in terms of her personality because it's revealed that Ezra is, like, her inspiration for all, like, all of her personality quirks, like... I thought they were going to delve further into that and like kind of reveal that Taylor was just doing it just for the euphoria and like the dopamine of getting the Instagram likes and stuff like that. I mean, I think she is to a certain extent. I mean, they kind of they hint at that quite a bit. I think that's pretty, you know, there that, you know, she, you know, her and Taylor in real life is not Instagram Taylor or whatever her Instagram handle is or whatever. Yeah, I thought they were kind of making a statement about, like, the online personality you have is different than the real personality, and that it's easily influenceable by, like, the the people you interact with, because everyone kind of seems to fall into, like, cliques online, like, they kind of all, your group pretty much posts the same things and likes the same things, and there's, like, it's ridding you of individuality. Right. Yeah. Um, How good is Elizabeth Olsen in this movie, though? Oh, I think she's great. She's definitely got that kind of valley girl vibe to her 
No, it's you, not you don't think girl. so. Well, I mean, it's like more that. Like Coachella. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The urban Outfitters looking girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're totally right. Anthropology. Yes. Hey, Anthropology got some dope candles though. That's like the upscale urban out. They mean they're owned by the same people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but like seriously, candles fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> um, do you think Charlotte ever reads those letters that Ingrid writes to her? No. Or a, a, a deeper question: Do you think Ingrid ever even writes those? Do you think they're just all in her head? No, I think she. They show her mailing it. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's what that is. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say maybe because they... I kind of thought that it too until they showed her mailing. Yeah, they like, dropped oh, her. Well, so you don't think Charlotte ever reads those? Nah, I mean I fucking. Well, wouldn't. again, I'm assuming she has a restraining order. But she still has her address. <laughs> yes, but that I'm pretty sure a part of restraining is you can't have any contact of any sort. Yeah. So again, this just brings up more of the point where she probably should have called the cops, been yeah. like this mentally unstable person's out of the mental facility, yeah. doing things that they were doing prior, and and still they ignore it. Yeah. So yeah, why tally. does like seriously no one ever calls the cops? Well, I think that's what Priscilla was saying. Is like that's kind of like her view about this. St- if I'm not talking over you, but like the, your view of the story is that it's all about mental health. Yes, I mean, I, I literally oh, no, was absolutely. just saying this that everyone is like so pro mental health until it comes to the point where they have to help someone with a mental health issue. Well, the problem is here. I don't don't really emphasize oh, emphasize. I don't really empathize with Ingrid's character. No, I, I think that's why it took me so long to get through the movie because I just didn't give a shit about her. I like, I feel like I'm supposed to because it's clearly that she's like mentally unstable, unstable, and not fit to even live her live on her own. Like, she clearly needs someone to take care of her. But I don't know this the way the movie is portrayed. Like, she never once shows any kind of empathy. She's very good at manipulating people. Oh, absolutely! It's, poor Dan yet again, man. Yeah, no, poor Dan. Like that scene where she takes his truck and he misses his script read through. Yeah. Um, and I really want to read his <laughs> his Batman, Batman script. <laughs> I'm so curious. Um, um, and then like comes home the next, like she finally shows up the next day. He's called the cops, but then waves him away when she shows up. His truck's all damaged. They did all his coke. What I did love that little bit where he's trying to get the cops to go away, and she's like, "Oh, we yeah. did all your coke." He's like, "What? what shut up." Yeah, Ingrid's not very that, good. At- at social cues <laughs> yeah that was that was a pretty funny little bit like there were moments in this movie where i kind of chuckled mm-hmm. but i could not actually laugh at anything because i was so uncomfortable by everything else that was happening in and like and around it yeah i agree i did love how she kept telling him when they go to that party together like don't talk about batman don't talk about this blah blah, blah. and then that's like Nikki or whatever like Taylor's brother is like all into it and like all they do is talk about Batman the entire time <laughs> yeah love that <laughs> um I think my favorite line from Dan is uh when he's talking to Ingrid after she returns the truck and she's like you're supposed to be Catwoman now you're just Two-Face <laughs> that was a oh classic yeah line. that was a real good one so you have something else you want to talk about no no I'm just trying to think there's another movie with the exact same storyline and it's driving me nuts because I can't remember is this it. movie yes same thing. Huh. Uh, ah, knock, knock. <laughs> I, <have laughs> I no mean, the idea. same where there's a social media obsessed person and they try to be like that person. I can't remember what it is. Um, it's going to bother me. I thought of it yesterday and I didn't write it down. And now I really regret not writing it down. I had Way to, to go. I uh, well, I'm, I'm all out of notes <laughs> until we get to the ending. Uh, is there anything you guys want to talk about before we get there? Um, no, nah, let's jump in. Priscilla, do you have anything? I'm looking at my notes. Well, while hold, you look at while you look at the those, take your uh, time. No, no, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump to the ending. I'll I'll just kind of lay it out for the audience while you're looking over. Okay. Okay. So Ingrid buys the house uh, in the desert next to Taylor's second home, right? Is that what that is? Yeah. It's no, her she. Home. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she buys the house that Taylor wanted to buy. Yes, right? next door. Okay. Um. How shady. I know. And for 50 grand, like, just drops the cash. Like, still feels like a cheap, cheap amount for a little house. But then again, it is out in the fucking desert. Um, in Joshua Tree? Yeah. Uh, so she buys the house. Um, they have a Halloween party next door. She tries to sneak over to charge her phone because her electricity has been shut off. She can't afford anything. She's out of money. Um, Wait, can we talk about her costume? <laughs> yeah, the ghost. But oh, so she cut. I've yeah, she so it's like a sh- a white sheet cuts eye holes out. 
you know, ghost costume. Yeah. And then she just puts a blonde wig yeah. on top of it. It was orange, and I totally have what she oh. looks like. She looks M- like what? Grimace. <laughs> the McDonald's character. Priscilla swears there's, uh, there's a McDonald's, like, Halloween ad or something where Grimace no. dressed up like a ghost. Yes. I- I know what she's so talking she, about. Okay, I, I didn't know what wow. the hell she was talking about. And I swore he had a wig on as well. So I was just like, oh my God, it's Grimace. Or <laughs> E.T. Because isn't that what he does? Yeah, because yeah. I remember they used to make, like McDonald's used to make little toys. Yeah. yeah. That like you could like um, take them apart. Like it would be like two pieces. You put them together. Yeah. When you take them apart, you could put a chicken nugget inside. <laughs> oh, I didn't remember that at all. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I, um, I think my parents still have like two or three of them back at our house. Yeah, but yeah. You could open it up and fit. It was like a little character. Yeah. Of each, you know, because the old the McDonald's used to have those little old little characters besides Ronald McDonald. Yeah. And you could like open it up, put a chicken nugget inside, and close it, and like save it for later. It's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so Taylor's dressed up as Claire from Clueless. I had no idea what anyone else was dressed up as. I couldn't tell you what Ezra or Nikki were dressed up as. Um, that's who Taylor's supposed to be. Yeah, because she's got that yellow plaid shirt. Um, oh. I thought I thought Ezra was supposed to be. How uh, did I not catch that? I don't know. I thought Nikki was supposed to be Hunter S. Thompson, but I don't think so. Like, cause he yeah. had the the uh, like fisherman's hat on and like the shirt, but I didn't. I think, think the men didn't. They looked like all the women dressed up, but the men did yeah. not. Anyways, that's that's literally the least important part. Uh, she sneaks over, tries to charge her phone. Taylor confronts her. They have a discussion. Basically, uh, Ingrid tries to call her out, saying that she's fake. That she everything she likes is because of Ezra. Uh, but pretty much, they just they just part ways completely. Uh, Ingrid goes back to their house. She starts like an Instagram live Wait, feed. Ingrid has that great little monologue right before that, though. Yeah, which is like sad, pathetic, and funny all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she starts up a video basically saying that she's a fake, that, you know, everything she's been posting has not been who she really is, and that she's going away. Uh, she takes a bunch of her medication, which they don't really tell you what the pills are, I don't think. Um, but yeah, she takes a bunch of medication, and, uh, she lays down basically to fall asleep and never wake up. Uh, And then she wakes up in a hospital, uh... Dan saw her Instagram post and came called 911. They rescued her. She's alive and in the hospital. And her video confessing that she's not really who she says she is, that she's a fake, um, seems to really connect with people. And they all, uh, she gets a ton of followers, tons of comments, tons of likes, basically just blows up, goes viral overnight, that she's a good spokesperson for mental health issues i'm guessing like that's kind of like the idea like it's implied that she's i guess but you can kind of see this glint in her eye that like the dopamine levels are just spiking and she's uh just so overwhelmed with all the uh attention she's getting and we kind of just cut to black um i i'm the movie is trying to tell me that this is a happy ending that ingrid got what she wanted which was attention but I don't see it that It way. is not a happy ending. Yeah. Oh, before we get there, Priscilla, is there something you wanted to talk about that you looked at your notes? I was going to say, there are some, uh, how she's broke. She has no money. She can't buy toilet paper. She has all these expensive ass clothes. Yeah. She could just sell them. She'd be okay. She's well, I don't know if she'd be that okay. She could definitely sell some. I mean, these are at least multiple hundred dollar dresses, outfits she has. She could at yeah. least afford toilet paper. Yeah, she could at least afford toilet paper. <laughs> um, True. I love how she makes that little, there's that little scene of her making a decision, Corona or toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is essentially the same choice. I also think mind. it's not I agree. what you think. You I, don't, just, I don't think it's about. Well, oh, do tell. I don't think they're like, oh, it's it's mental health. Like, this is why we like her. I think it was just like an outrageous thing and and people get interested just like people rubberneck when there's a car accident fair point so you think this is this is like very transient i mean look at the the catch me outside girl she's famous for nothing so yeah i mean could be the equivalent she's just insane and people like to watch you know train wrecks so by by that standard you do think this is a sad to do because she is essentially a train wreck that got popular yeah but i mean it's gonna lead her to what she wants 
I don't know what Ingrid wants. I don't think it's a good ending. I don't think it's a it's a neutral ending for me. I don't think she necessarily wants the attention. I think she enjoys, like, obsessing. She's sad. I think she's lonely. Yes, but I, I I don't think this is the kind of attention she needs. I think it's she not, needs. It's not the attention she needs. She needs but people like Dan. <laughs> it's like a band aid, though. Yeah, but I feel like it's a band aid that is just covering up poison. Like but it's maybe, not going to help. Maybe Dan is going to help her. You don't I, know that. I he think might. so. I I want to believe Dan is. The I hero. fucking hope he does. I want to believe he's Batman <laughs> and he's going to swoop down and take care of her. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just want to talk about uh the fact that I feel like this climax is supposed to be therapeutic, but up until the actual suicide attempt with her coming out and confessing that she's a fake, she's not who she says she is, that the social media game is a lie, like it's not who she really is. That's all great. That's exactly what she needs to do. But then she immediately commits suicide. And I feel like it's just the moral of the story that could be there is immediately wiped away with her surviving and getting all this attention. I feel like it's not a good message yeah. to tell people. Because, like, impressionable young minds that see this movie might be thinking, oh, that's what I need to do. I need to commit suicide to I get mean, a bunch of. Realistically, I feel like it doesn't matter what she did. Like, if she commits suicide, viral. I mean, it's. I mean, it's like gonna, if it actually happened, it's gonna go viral because yeah. it's just like. Yeah. There's no. God, I hate the internet. There's not a good ending. People have done that. Yeah. I I personally have no know a certain person who did. They they committed suicide on Facebook Live, and it went pretty viral. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. It's pretty intense. Um, it's not good. Man. So and I just like post pictures of like dumb shit. I could be doing so much more. <laughs> um. So, Mally, is there anything else you want to talk about before we get to silver linings? Or Priscilla, is there anything you want else uh, that you want to talk about? I mean, I just wanted to point out that the brother, which by the way was my most hated character, <laughs> I think like, everybody oh, was he most lo- hateable. He that he was, was a dick. That was the most cringy thing about the movie was that guy. The blackmailing. Or well, just him, no, him just in general. him in general. He yeah. looked like an 80s drug lord or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't, other than Shades of Dan, I don't really like anybody in this movie. See, what about Taylor's husband, Ezra? No. I don't know, man. Like, I didn't hate him. I hate I hate his I fucking squad goals paintings. He probably just did those. <laughs> Such a douche. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's oh, stuck, no. though. Yeah, and I mean, it's pretty. I mean, he pretty much says that Taylor encouraged him to do that shit. Yeah. And, uh, well, she you know, did that it whole too. scene. What's her name too? Yeah, like that scene with him at the like drunk by the pool. Yeah. Like that scene kind of got me. I was like, dude, I really feel bad for this. And then it's like, and then Ingrid gets like you know obsessed about her phone and goes away, and like we leave that scene. I was kind of like, oh, that could have gone on longer. Yeah. But no, I think like bits of Ezra and bits of Dan are good and then everyone else in this movie i fucking despise yeah i agree um well let's get into silver linings mally uh what, what do you got or do you want me to go first um mine kind of ties in i'll go first because mine kind of ties in what i was just talking about okay um i think after all that happens because um ingrid actually kind of calls him out in her big monologue um mine kind of goes with ezra i think he's gonna you know kind of have you know him and taylor gonna have their little talk and he's you know gonna tell her like you know i'm not you know i i don't want to do these dumb pieces of art like i'm not happy doing this you know blah 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 so i think honestly ezra and taylor's relationship is going to come out a little better throughout all of this yeah because they kind of got someone finally kind of called all of them on their shit yeah and i think they're going to come out better in the end maybe a little traumatized from this shit, but better overall, I think. So I know you had a silver lining we talked about in the car on the way here. Do you want to give what yours is? <laughs> yes. I've been waiting this whole episode <laughs> for my oh God. silver lining. Oh, God. I think the silver lining, because I guess it obviously is different for different characters. Wait, hang on. Let me get a drum roll going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Dan got his Batmobile and his <laughs> Catwoman. <laughs> yeah. I think he's also happy to finally find a girl who's freaky enough. I like the little silver Batmobile emblem on the uh, scooter he had. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice touch. Um, my silver lining is I think that with the suicide attempt that uh, people are going to take uh, Ingrid's 
uh, mental health a lot more serious. I, I think that before when she just pepper sprayed Charlotte at the wedding, they kind of just saw it as, oh, this is just a girl just acting crazy. But now that, that she's actually tried to cross the Rubicon, that now she'll actually get the help she actually needs. And Dan especially will be uh, just a, a pillar of uh, support for her. And I hope that they, she he did get indeed get his Catwoman, but that she'll be more like a Batgirl by the time this is all over with. Someone oh a little more stable. Uh, so I think she's on the way to to actual rehabilitation, actual help, but she definitely, they got to take that phone from her. I don't think Ingrid ever needs a phone I with internet work. capabilities. <laughs> well, I think that's the implied ending here, but I'm looking at it a little bit deeper. I think that a judge or just a doctor in general will see what's happened here and will get her on the path to recovery and at least coping with her condition. So, yeah. I mean, that would be the happy ending. That would be the happy ending that I would, was hoping this movie would take me towards. It did not. Um, Mally, would you recommend uh, anyone that hasn't seen this movie to see it? Uh, Yeah, probably. Like I said, it's a really good movie. It's just, like, super uncomfortable to get through. Yeah. Priscilla, do you recommend this movie? Yeah, I guess so. It's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. Probably not to anyone I personally knew I wouldn't recommend this movie. Yeah, I don't think I would recommend it just because I don't think the message is very good. Uh, I would say, yeah, watch it for entertainment's sake. Don't try to make take a moral from the story. Don't try to learn anything. Uh, just enjoy it for the comedy, the black comedy aspects of it. Uh, so, yeah. Mally, do you have a movie people should watch after... Ingrid Goes West as a movie pick me up, an alternative. Oh, I absolutely do. Okay. Um, sticking with Aubrey Plaza, and you know, this movie kind of starts the plot of this movie kind of hinges on a certain little aspect of social media with a post particularly. I'm gonna go with Mike and Dave need wedding dates. <laughs> I never saw that as any good. I it is that. so goddamn funny. You think it's funny. I don't like those kind of movies personally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pers- me and Priscilla do not get along when it comes to movies. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I've gathered. I'm also going to stick with the theme of Aubrey Plaza, a movie. The movie I first saw her in that I think this movie is hilarious, and either people, not a lot of people, know, know about it. I think I know where you're going. I'm going with Mystery Team. Hilarious nice. fucking movie. Uh, nice. Donald Glover, uh, the uh, Derek Comedy Group. It's 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 so fucking funny, and Aubrey Plaza is great in it. Uh, Priscilla, you don't have to have Super one. Super underrated. Yes, I agree. You don't have to have one, but is there a movie you think people should watch after this one? To... <sighs> I wish I could remember the one that has the same storyline, and I would just suggest that. But, well, is it a pick-me-up movie? or is Was it, it that horror movie? movie, Unfriended? No, it wasn't a horror movie. But say, okay. the, whole, the whole point is well, a movie I mean, to I'm, pick I'm their spirits sure up. I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> yeah, an well. okay movie. Uh, what, is, what is that one movie she did? I Love You, Beth. Oh, uh, Life After Beth? Life After Beth. Where she's a zombie? There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay uh that's, a, I that's a fun movie priscilla thank you very much for being on the episode uh i hope you enjoyed your time and enjoyed watching this movie with me again are you gonna plug my instagram or oh my god we should totally do that what is what is your instagram <laughs> oh people god. can follow jesus christ it's priscilla lynn with three n's all right you heard it well again thank you for being on the show priscilla all right, so thank you for listening, uh, everyone. Please subscribe and leave us a rating in the uh, iTunes store. Or if you're listening on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or YouTube, just give us a like and some feedback if you don't mind. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Silver Linings Playlist. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram at the Silver Linings Playlist. Uh, our subreddit, where you can go to leave that contest code we gave you, is uh, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist you can find the official discussion thread for Ingrid goes west talk about the movie there with your peers and with us uh you can also leave us a, su- a suggestion for a movie we should cover or uh, give us feedback about the show anything you want to do uh mally although when i suggest movies we can never do them because someone hasn't seen them. well you well, there is a movie no, i've seen doesn't have access to there it. is a movie we've both seen that we are talking about yes. next week so mally do you want to give us a clue for what that movie is i do clue for next week Tootie fucking fruity. If that's not the most obvious clue <laughs> we've ever given, it is. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Absolutely. So because t- next week's gonna be a fun episode. Agreed. Uh, so just some closing words of wisdom here. Don't don't take Instagram so seriously. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, True story. With that, though, please follow us on Instagram. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, and Mally, uh, as always, Excelsior. Hashtag blessed. Oh, my God.